Hey everyone, Juan here, and today in this video, I wanted to go over why most people don't get results with e-commerce. I personally think that there's numerous reasons why people don't get results with e-commerce, but in this video specifically, I wanted to talk about what I see people doing when it comes to testing products that keeps them back from getting the results they're looking for. Now, I actually put together some notes here for you guys because I wanted to make sure I covered specific things and I didn't leave anything out so that this makes the most sense. We'll get started with this. So I know that there's different ways that people test products, right? Some people have their way of doing it. Some other people have their way of doing it. I don't think there's any exact right way to always test products, but I know that there's some wrong ways to test products for sure. And that's what we'll kind of talk about. Typically what I see is that when I speak with either clients or students that I work with and they tell me how you know, products that they've tested, they haven't really gotten the results they're looking for. And I go back and look through, you know, what they've done so far. I'm able to really narrow down as to why they didn't actually test a product enough to see if it can actually get results or not. Because typically what most people do is they'll choose a product and they'll launch some Facebook ads for it and they'll wait two to three days to see what kind of results they can get. And there's basically three different scenarios, right? Either in those three days, you're either negative where you know, you're spending money on, you're testing that product and you're not making any sales, so you're just completely negative. You're testing the product where you're just breaking even, right? You're, you're just barely making back what you're spending on ads. And then obviously there's a third scenario, which is the best, which is like you're profitable. In our day and age with how ad costs have gone up over time, it's very rare that your first time testing a random product, unless you definitely know what you're doing, you're gonna become profitable right away. So that's what this video is gonna be covering, how when testing products, how even if you're not profitable, if you're just breaking even, how you can actually still adjust and actually still turn that into a profitable product Potentially, right? Because not every it's not going to work for every single product, but there are some products that you guys have potentially tested in the past that just with a few missing tweaks or tweaks that you do to that product could have actually ended up being a profitable product for you. So I wanted to give this example, right? From a beginner's perspective, right? Obviously, if you're losing money right away or if you're just breaking even, that's not enough of a reason for you to actually keep going and working with that product or keep testing that product. And it makes sense. But for people that have been in the space or more advanced e-commerce entrepreneurs, you know, we understand that you can still turn that into a profitable product. So, you know, let's say you have a $20 product. This is just a perfect example. You have a $20 product and right now it's costing you $25 to actually generate sales for that product, right? So right now that would basically put you in the negative. Um, right away, that would be like a red flag for most people. Now, in reality though, if you're still getting purchases on this product that's just costing you a little bit more than you'd want to get purchases, the first thing you should try to do is see how you can increase your average order value with that product to see if you can take those purchases that you're getting and actually become profitable. Because ideally, if you're getting purchases on that product, that's a very good sign. It's a different conversation if you're just getting no purchases on the product and you're just completely negative. That steers me into testing a different product, testing a different ad creative. But if you're getting purchases, right? And you're just not profitable. The first thing you should do immediately is see how you can increase your average order value. And some of you guys may be asking how there's a couple different ways you can do it. One of the first ways you can try to increase your average order value is by having like a buy one, get one offer where if a product, if a customer comes in, they can get another product alongside with the main product you're advertising for free, right? And you're advertising that. And so typically what you do is you work in some of the product cost into the cost of the original product that can typically alter how much it's actually costing you to acquire a customer because it's a much better deal for them. So you can typically get different costs for purchases if you're offering like a bundle, right? Like an offer that's, that's typically, a, that's worked a lot better for me. You can also test charging them a little bit more for shipping if they only buy one of your product. But if they add another product of yours, they can actually get free shipping. So a perfect example is like we have a $20 product. It's set there, you can charge them $7 extra for shipping. But if they choose to add one more to the product, you can offer them a discount and have them get free shipping. Typically this works. It's like the spend X, get free shipping. A lot of, a lot of typical e-commerce brands do this. And that does work as well as far as increasing average order value. But that's just another approach you can take to try to increase your average order value. My personal favorite to try to increase average order value is upselling and downselling. Some of you guys may already know what upselling and downselling is. It's basically when you offer your customers a complimentary product that typically goes hand in hand with the main product that they came in for. 
let's say you're selling a $20 product, right? And it's still costing you $25 to get a purchase on that product. But you can have a complimentary product that goes hand in hand with that main product that costs, let's say $40. Let's say you offer it for $40. Typically, when I'm testing different offers, I like to test the offer with at least 100 sales to see if I can end up turning it, this product into a potential winning product or not. At those numbers, right, 100 sales, it would cost me or would cost you guys $2,500 to generate those sales, right? That 100 sales means you generated $2,000 in revenue. So typically, you're in the red, right? You're negative $500. Now, let's say... On average, in the e-commerce space, 10 to 30% of all total revenue comes from upsells and downsells. So let's say we use a safety number of just 15%. I personally have had times where I've gotten 40% of my total revenue come from upsells, but that's I would say that's a lot more extreme. Let's say 15% of your total sales, you get an additional upsell, right? So now let's say you're getting that 15% conversion rate on that 100 sales that you got. That means that you generated an extra 15 sales on your upsells, right? Now those 15 sales on the $40 product makes you an extra $600. So now things are completely different because now you went from spending $2,500 on ads to generate just $2,000. Now you're spending $2,500 on ads to generate $2,600. So now not only have you breaking even, but you've profited an extra $100 before any other offers or promotions. Now, this is obviously super important and this is a little bit more advanced. A lot of you guys may have heard me talk about the front end and the back end. Typically the front end is uh, referred to like when a customer first buys from you initially and the back end is referred to you how you can maximize that customer lifetime value with you know upsells downsells and email marketing so i know that for some of you guys watching you may say like okay adding in the upsell let's say is only an extra hundred dollars yeah but if you think about this at scale now and you have 200 orders now you can expect an extra 200 dollars profit and again this is before any other offers and promotions typically for us we actually are able to get our customers to buy at least one or two other products on the back end so let's say worst case scenario you can only get your customers to buy one extra product on the back end well now any customer that you get that buys from you from an email that's automatically going to make your total ad spend for those specific customers completely profitable because now you're generating even more revenue on the back end right so this does take some time to set up like it's not something that right away it's going to just click for you guys this is a little bit more advanced but what you guys want to make sure to do is if you're going to take your time to test products and you're going to go through all the work to set it all up make sure that you also utilize different things like upsells downsells and cross. that's another thing we didn't even talk about downsells now the conversion rates that you get on upsells are a lot higher typically than downsells and the reason why is because you offer an upsell first before downsell typically the order the process goes customer comes in for the main product you then offer an upsell and then if they say yes to that then you add it to their order and that's pretty much it if they say no then you offer them a downsell which is typically a less expensive product and then if they say no to that then you maybe you offer them another upsell or another downsell. You basically, you know, it's like when you buy an airplane ticket and they start offering you extra leg room, like a fast pass, if you want to bring a pet, like they're offering you all these different upsells and downsells. And the order it typically goes in is that you're typically getting offered a more expensive upsell first. And then if you say, again, if you say no, then a downsell, which is a less expensive purchase, and then again, upsell, a downsell. And the reason why the conversion rates are typically lower on the downsells are because you present that initial offer they're either going to buy or they're not right typically if they buy that offer you're not going to present them the off the downsell so that's why conversion rates on downsells are a little bit lower they're only really seeing the downsells if they don't ever buy the upsells that was just an example with trying to increase your average order value with upsells and downsells this is something that you guys will have to do in, right now in our day and age because as you guys know, advertising costs have gotten more expensive. So if you just try to generate profit on your initial purchases, meaning the first time customers buy from you and that's it, it's gonna be a difficult game. You're gonna to have to either charge more for your product. And again, if there's like other competitors, things like that, and you're charging more, well, you're probably gonna get less conversion. So you're gonna to have to learn how to increase your average order value either with offering like spend X, get free shipping, which is what we went over, setting up bogo offers so like if a customer buys this comes in for this initial product they can also get 
a complimentary product free, they're just paying a little bit more than usual. Or you have to get really good at upsells and downsells. And the process that a lot of people go through pretty often is that they find products that can generate sales, but they just can't become profitable. Like they're either in the red or they're just breaking even. This is the solution to getting out of the red and actually becoming profitable. I would make sure that you guys spend some time kind of just playing around with you know some of these offers. One thing that's also important if you're gonna do like a, a BOGO offer or upsell or downsell, you always wanna make sure that the products or the offers that you put together are complementary products that go with the main product. You can't offer someone, you know, let's say some headphones and then try to upsell them on a keyboard or a mouse. That doesn't make sense. Now, if somebody comes in for a keyboard, a perfect upsell could be like a mouse, right? Or vice versa. If they come in for a mouse, a perfect upsell could be a keyboard. To get the best possible results, you always want your offers for your upsells or downsells or your buy one, get one offers to be of complimentary products. That's what I have seen to work the best. That's pretty much it for this video. Uh, I wanted to kind of hammer that home for you guys because this is something that has been working for me. And I know for a fact that not understanding this is keeping a lot of people back from getting results because I constantly hear about how people were testing a product and because they, they couldn't get it to become profitable, they stopped advertising that product, even if that product was generating purchases. Because again, if you can get a product to generate purchases, then from there, that's already a very good sign. Your main focus from there should be not on seeing how you can become profitable with your ads. I mean, yeah, you can test out different ad creatives, things like that, but to really see how you can also increase the average order value because increasing your average order value also allows you to understand how much you can afford to spend to acquire a customer. Because in this same scenario where we've had the, uh, the $20 product, even if, let's say if it's costing us $25 to acquire a customer, if our average order value now, we're able to get it to $40, now it's okay to acquire customers at $25, right? Because we're still profitable. But if you never increase your average order value, obviously at that $25 cost for purchase, you will never become profitable. So that's pretty much it for this video. If you guys got any value from this video, I'd appreciate it if you dropped a like for me. And also, if you have any questions about anything that we went over in regards to you know, upselling, offers, anything related, drop it down in the comments below. I'll make sure to get back to you guys. If you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button, join the family, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.